Welcome back to Mini Mayhem. I'm Austrick Vox, and we are so close to the series finale of Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Cleaved, which will see Star embark on our mission to destroy magic once and for all. But that has me thinking. What would happen to the world or a multiverse of star once magic is gone for good? How drastically would it change? Because it would be a drastic change. So I want to do a little bit of last minute speculation and figure that out today. So let's get started. Starting with the one we know, seemingly for a fact, will happen. Glosseric for sure would cease to exist. According to, well, Glosseric himself. At first we believed Glosseric was tethered to the Book of Spells, as it's destroyed and destroyed him. Yet, I personally believed his reincarnation in season 3 meant that he was no longer tethered to the book and that, well, he would just never die. But maybe Glosseric was tethered to two things, the book and magic itself. Or maybe Star reincarnating him by throwing a piece of the book into a pool of magic bound Glosseric's life to magic itself. Either way, it seems as if Glosseric knew this would happen. When he met his demise in Book Be Gone, he remarked, I knew this was coming, but it's still sort of a surprise. Maybe it was a surprise because he believed his death would come at the destruction of magic, and that Ludo destroying the book was something he never saw coming. But beyond Glosseric, what else is there? Well, if his conversation with Star in Tavern at the end of the multiverse is any indication, portals to every dimension would cease to exist. Though, as I speculated before, every dimension may be united as one. This would also mean portals could no longer be created, so those dimensional scissors Marco worked so hard to get, yeah buddy, all those years spent in the Never Zone was kinda for nothing. Well, not for nothing. Those scissors came in handy plenty of times, but their usefulness as a resource was pretty finite at the end of the day. If every dimension doesn't become one, think of how crazy this is. Not only would Earth and Muni be separated forever, but Kelly's world, the bureaucracy of magic, the underworld, and so many more places will be cut off from one another. This sacrifice would see Star giving up a lot, and I mean a lot of her friends. There's Romulus and his crystals. We saw a little bit of what would happen if magic ceased to exist throughout season 2. In correlation to Romulus, however, if we look at Crystal Clear, Romulus remarks that his crystals were also on the fritz. So I'm assuming with magic gone entirely, they would either continue to weaken or dissipate entirely, freeing his victims, and he would probably lose the ability to create crystals. His snake arms are also kind of like magic, so I'm assuming they would also go bye-bye and he would just have normal kind of lame arms. But this raises a bigger question that I want to look at with Omni Traction's Prime. Omni seems to be the most magic out of the Magic High Commission. Would he continue to exist without magic or would he also vanish? In fact, Glosser created all of the Magic High Commission, so if he goes, maybe they would all go entirely? Granted, they survived after his first death, so maybe not. We do need to remember that the Magic High Commission was created so humans could have a better understanding of aspects surrounding magic. If there's no magic, is there going to be a High Commission? Because regardless, they would no longer be needed entirely. Although they could always find a new purpose, I think at the very least Hecapu has earned some kind of redemption points and could be integrated better into Muni's politics. Maybe instead of dealing with interdimensional travel, if every dimension does become one, Hecapu could just deal with normal travel. Ways of transportation across this one giant united dimension. Could you imagine Hekapu getting all science-y instead of magic-y? But on the note of the Magic High Commission, the bureaucracy of magic was already giving Glossrick trouble when it was on the fritz. I think without magic, it wouldn't even be able to function. Again, it may just disappear and cease to exist. And that goes for many places in the multiverse that solely run on magic. Even the tavern at the end of the multiverse. That looked like it required some sort of magic. I mean, there's a guy who has to hold his breath in mud and until someone either wants to enter or exit, so, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that requires some kind of magic? Everything we know about the show would greatly change. Even Ponyhead, her and her family may lose the ability to fly, because wouldn't flying be a result of magic? She definitely wouldn't be able to cast any magic for a horn anymore, but what would that leave for Ponyhead? Would she just be crawling everywhere with her chin? Or again, would they have to science something up, maybe some kind of mech so she can just walk around normally like a normal girl? Although we know from the past that she can rock some jeans when she desires, so maybe she can figure something out just fine. The royal magic wand would be absolutely defunct, maybe even reduced back to a baby rattle. It only turned into a wand because of magic, so 
so take that away and it's just something to satisfy a baby. Perhaps Ludo will finally get the wand once it's defunct. Could you imagine? The wand is finally mine and it, it, it doesn't do anything. W what? I'm just saying if Ludo pops up and has like one more relapse, that'd be a humorous gag to bookend everything. All the mill horses in the realm of magic may cease to exist as well. Or maybe they'll live, finding their way into Muni. As I'm not sure if Disney, and more specifically Darren Nepsey and her crew, would want to go that dark. Oh, hey, you see all these adorable mill horses? Uh, yeah, dead forever. <laughs> On that note, all of the sentient spells within the Wand Dimension could also find their way into Muni by magic. As Glosseric said, the magic in its final moments will put everyone where they belong. And if we're going off that logic, they would belong to Star or Eclipsa or or moon, or maybe they would all split up, or just live throughout Muni or the castle, wherever they decide. And the most important thing that really isn't a negative consequence, humans could no longer oppress monsters. The only reason monsters were driven out of their home and oppressed by humans for hundreds if not thousands of years was because of magic. With magic, humans were able to quote unquote fight back and take land from the people who actually deserved it. And I think monsters are finally at a point where they would would no longer hold grudges against humans. Everyone would just be accepting and get along the way things were supposed to be this entire time. The only person I can think of who would hold a grudge is like Seth, but who cares about that old geezer? He didn't even pop up in this final season. It's not like he was wasted potential or anything. Oh God. <laughs> But what do you at home think will happen once magic ceases to be? If it ceases to be at all, maybe it won't be destroyed. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Austric Fox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or support us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Fox, signing out. Hey everyone, just Letting you know a pre-recorded message that we will be at Momocon 2019. We'll be there all four days, but I know what you're thinking. What about the panels? And to that, my friend, I have an answer. Friday at 2:30, we'll be on the Channel Frederator panel, talking about our experiences as content creators. Then on Saturday at 4 p.m., we have the first ever animation showcase with a bunch of other content creators in the cartoon community: Cosmodor, Rubble Taxi, Nintendo, Saber Spark. You name it. We'll be showing off a bunch of animated projects, such as Hasbin Hotel, whose creator will also be there, Logon Gulch, Amoda and Nepson, and more. And yes, we will be showing exclusive footage you cannot see anywhere else. Well, I mean, until the actual panel, where I'm sure it'll be live streamed and you can, but you guys get the point. After that, our final panel will be Saturday at 7. Another Steven Universe of the Fan of this panel. Us, Mackenzie Atwood, Slice of Otaku, Rose's Universe, and Michaela Deese. The voice of Amethyst. Oh yeah, did I mention this TV Universe cast will be there? Zach Callison, Dee Dee Magnahal, Michaela Dietz, and Estelle. Well, Estelle's only gonna be on Thursday, but Estelle. Get hyped for Momocon, guys. It's so close, and I have a feeling it'll be one of the best years yet. Hope to see some of your beautiful faces there.